in some in some paddocks there'll be there'll be some in there. Also, you'll get it moving off roads. And another way too that you'll get it is moving animals around. You know, they'll transfer seed. And often, it, you'll you'll once you start looking for um, uh, and being aware of some of these perennial plants, you'll find there's more in there than than you think. Especially the ones that are tolerant. Well, to start with, the ones that are tolerant to Roundup will be in there because you can't kill the bloodlings anyway. But they'll, they'll be still in there. So what we're talking about is building a grassland off those species that are left. Not add, not putting these in, but using the ones that have, re have remained from the cropping program, using those to build it off. Now, okay, to start with, it's, it's not a wonderful grassland. It, it's just some perennial grasses in there. But but it's the foundation we build the grassland off. You don't need to go and sow anything, but use what, what is there. And then you'll start to get some of these, we'll start, we'll recolonise. Um, this one, you know, it, 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 it's a not a bad grass, there's certainly better grass than this than red grass, but, but it's 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 a summer grower and what you lack here is summer species. You've probably got plenty of winter ones. So I, I guess I'd assume that your worst uh, grazing period it would be <coughs> summer and autumn, would that be right? It's, it's a time. Yep. And that's because we don't have, you, there's not enough of, of these types of species, those summer ones. Mm. You can you can so the introduced versions of those Things like Premier Digit and Bambatsi and Green Panic are all actually African sea form species. Yeah. So you can buy that seed. If you, if, if you can't do it naturally, you can sow and start to... And then you can crop into those species as well. I'd pass crop into them. We're not talking about... Certainly once you get those grasses in there, it doesn't stop you from growing crops. In fact, it'll make your crops and soils better. We're not, we're not saying, well, you, we don't have to... We don't have to um, like, uh, think, think that because there's a pasture there I can't crop it. You can have a pasture and crop it as well. The two can be intertwined basically. You still use fertiliser? Oh yeah, you still, whatever, whatever that crop needs. But you can now, now you know, in relation to soil help, you can do buffer whatever fertilisers you'd use with humates or you can start moving towards some of those soil friendlier ones like guano and, and those anyway there's, there's yeah. quite a lot of good good organic type fertilizers yeah. out there now standard fertilizer doesn't it doesn't affect the um, growth of not as much as people tell you oh. no no um well, you could put you could put, you could put fertilizer on. like the com conventional fertilizer you count how great it was yeah yeah of course you would. yeah but no that no it doesn't affect the, these grasses uh, you could use 100 kilos of dap on those won't hurt them at all no. In fact, they'll grow. Native grasses don't respond that much to phosphorus, but they do like nitrogen. So they will respond to the nitrogen that's in the, in the dap. The grass, yeah, they, they, can, they can tolerate quite low, low levels of phosphorus. They can access the reserve. Yes, yes, and they do. That's, that's yep. what they do. I'll show you some slides tonight on how, what happens when we start getting perennial plants growing and how you can build soil. The soil at home now is now a foot deep through the fence on my brother's place, who's still farming conventionally, it's four, four inches. inches. Yeah. That's, what, that's what's here, four inches. Yep. So that, that foot is topsoil? Topsoil now. Okay. Yep, and that's that's only, well I think now I could do that at home in five or six years. It took, it's taken 10 or 12 years to do it, but, yeah. Um, yeah, and it's related to perennial species and managing them well. But yeah, yeah, yeah. field days, your place? <coughs> oh well, the group, the banana mob, um, they came up there last year to my place. You know, the, 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 the ones, and they'll do it again this year too. They want to come up again. Yeah. But you can build, you can build topsoil. No, absolutely, no doubt about that. And you, you, you can, can build it faster than an inch a year. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah your yeah. brother I'm still skeptical about it. He's, he's a good operator. It's really interesting. My brother's a good operator in a conventional sense, and he's a very good feeder of sheep. Runs a very good quality fat lamb producer. Um, and financially, he's going okay. But in the summer, you know, he's, he's got no feed. He's got heaps of feed in, in the winter. So, um, you, you know, he's, he's a very good operator. But, but um, and, and he's farming like I, like I used to farm, which is, which, so it's good to have that comparison yeah. there. He's not doing anything, anything wrong, uh, but farming conventionally. You don't, you don't conserve fodder? 
now. Oh, no, it's not quite true. We do, I don't cut hay, um, but I do keep some uh, silos topped up with oats, but I rarely feed, uh, feed sheep in dry times. Um, you certainly wouldn't drought feed. Um, well, I mean, if, if it got to that stage, I would definitely start reducing stock rather than drought feed, but that, that's another story.